Hallelujah. If you believe in that name, shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Say his name. His name. His name. He's a strong tower. I believe in that name. That name works for me. That name works for me. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. You know, we are now in March. Very soon, the first quarter of the year will be gone. But see the goodness of the Lord in our lives already. Praise the Lord. We are not in lockdown. We are in lockout. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is in our midst. And his goodness and mercy is all over us. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to this gospelogy service from wherever you are. Those of you in the micro churches, those of you watching online, the church in Munich, we want to say to you, welcome to this wonderful service and that the power of God will locate you wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to believe that the word of the Lord will do you good. I want you to believe that the anointing and the grace of God will minister unto you abundantly today in the name of Jesus Christ. I say to you, wherever you are watching from, just open yourself to the word of the Lord and receive this word of life. You will be amazed the transformation that will take place in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand before heaven and say, Father, let your word enter into me. Let your word produce in me. Let your word do wonders in me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to live here the same way. But I want to live transformed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have come to Mount Zion with an expectation. This morning, I will not be disappointed. The word will work for me. The word will prevail for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen to me wherever you are. If there is anything that is a distraction in your body. Either pain or sickness or disease or disturbances of whatever it is. is not of God. Praise the Lord. All right now before we get into the service. We want to take care of that so that you will be able to enjoy the service. Lift up your hand before God. And say Father. Let your light. Enter into me and shine through me. And whatsoever that is not of God, every seed, every plant not planted by God, let the light of God uproot it right now, dismantle it right now from my body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command light. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, I command the light of God to dominate me, to saturate me. In the name of Jesus Christ, body, I command you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I have come to Mount Zion. Be healed, be delivered, be made whole. Of every infirmity, of every pain, of every sickness, of every disease, of every affliction. For I have come to the healer. For I have come to the healer. And therefore by faith, I receive my healing. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare my body healed. 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 Shout a big hallelujah if you believe that. Shout a big hallelujah if you believe that. And so shall it be. 
and so shall it be. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. You are delivered in Jesus' mighty name. You are free in Jesus' mighty name. And so shall it be. And so shall it be. Just lift up your hand and give God praise and give him glory. For what the Lord has done is permanent. Hallelujah. For what the Lord has done is permanent. Hallelujah. Just worship him, give him praise, give him glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just take your seat. Our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. Amen. Today, we are going to start something that I believe that will bless you. Amen. Some of you may ask, why now are we discussing about it? Some of you may say, Pastor, why didn't you share about this some years ago? Some of you may say, I don't need it anymore because it's too late. But no word of God is ever too late to us in Jesus' mighty name. What are we talking about today and maybe for the next few weeks? The things you must know before you get married. Praise the Lord. The things that you must know before you get married. And then somebody says, I'm already married, then this service is not for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you are already married, you may just discover the source of the problem you are having in your home. You may just discover some of the things you can do better. You may just discover some of the things you can change. But when the word of the Lord comes to us, it's never too late. Praise the Lord. When the word of the Lord comes to us, it's never too late. So, I want you to fasten your seatbelt, take your pen, take your paper, especially all of you, the youths, those of you in the micro churches in Okaro or in Mosaku or any other place you are or wherever you are connected from, this is something that will transform your life and your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Apparently, we are doing CDI, and this topic is coming up. Now, they work together. So in the next two, three weeks, as we deal with the issue of marriage, and then CDI, believe me, you will be a different person in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. At a point in time, everybody wants to get married. Is that not true? Male or female, you know, you want to get married at a particular time in life or at a particular age. In some, in some traditions, by a certain age, if you are not married, it is already a problem. It's already a problem if you are not married at a certain age and then you have to deal with a lot of issues in the society or from the society praise the lord but what is god's take about marriage what is the position of god about getting married amen very often the church has not been very vocal in this area of teaching and we need to be because marriage is very important Marriage is too important for us to ignore. You know why? Because your type of marriage determines what comes out of the marriage. Your type of marriage determines what comes out of it. So if you have knowledge and understanding about why you are married or why you should be married, then you will do a better work in marriage and then the that comes out of marriage praise the lord 
Where do we exactly start in this matter? The Bible says to us, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Amen? Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together except if they are what? In agreement. So it tells us that first thing first, if you are going to get married with somebody, you must be in agreement with that person. Amen? You must be in agreement with that person. You must understand each other. You must be able to communicate with each other. Now, before that, you also need to understand that marriage is not a man's institution. Marriage is God's institution. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 2, we can see that God instituted marriage. God was the one that established marriage. God was the one that led the foundation of marriage from Genesis chapter 2. So, if you are going to do it well, you will need God in it. Praise the Lord. If you are going to have a good marriage, you will need God in it. Why? Because marriage is of God. Because God laid the foundation for marriage. So if you are going to, if you are going to get it right, God must be right in it. If you are going to get marriage right, God must be right in it. Nobody can make a marriage work without God. Nobody. Because it is the institution of God. And the Bible calls it a holy institution. A holy institution. Praise the Lord. A holy institution. So right from the beginning in Genesis chapter 2, we see that God instituted marriage all the way from the beginning. If you read from verse 18 all the way to 24, you will know that God established marriage. Amen? So when you want to get married, understand the foundation of marriage first. Understand that it is God's institution. Not only God's institution. The Bible says it is a holy institution. Malachi chapter 2 verse 11. Malachi chapter 2. Just open there so that we can all be well informed from the word of God. Malachi chapter 2 verse 11. It is a holy institution. Judah has dealt treacherously, and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah, for Judah has profaned the Lord's holy institution, which he loves. He has married the daughter of a foreign god. Praise the Lord. We will get to all that later on as we progress. Maybe this week, maybe next Sunday. But I want you to understand that the Bible makes it clear that marriage is God's holy institution. Marriage is God's holy institution. It doesn't matter what somebody thinks about it. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. I am telling you what the word of God says that marriage is God's holy institution and anybody that profanes it will not enjoy it and in this case Judah profaned marriage because he married the daughter of a foreign god he married the daughter of an idol worshipper we are not there yet we are going to take it one by one we are going to lay the foundation, precept upon precept, word upon word, so that you can follow clearly. But so you now know that marriage is an institution of God from Genesis chapter 2. You also know that it is a holy institution of God from Malachi chapter 2. Praise the Lord. You also know that two cannot work together except they are great. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. Are you with me right now? Are you following? Praise the Lord. Now. That is 
that is just a tip of the iceberg. Let's get, let's get deeper. When God says that the marriage is a holy institution, and the Bible says, do not give what is holy to dogs. Do not give what is holy to dogs. Matthew chapter 7. I want you to open there also. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. That is a key scripture you need to understand. When marriage is a holy institution, and it is a holy institution, and it is an ordinance of God, and Jesus said to us, do not give what is holy to the dogs. Do not give what is holy to the dogs. Nor cast your pearls before swine. What is, what is going on? What is the revelation here? It brings us to the point of you and what you want. Praise the Lord. You can't just enter into marriage lightly. You will miss it. You will miss it. It is something holy. You can't just marry whoever you want. You can bring trouble upon yourself, like Judah. Judah married who he wanted, and there was trouble. It was profanity before God. Amen. Amen. Right now, love is not in the equation yet. <laughs> Amen? Right now, do you see that love is not even in the equation? Love does not even come up in this discussion right now. Because the important thing is to get it right with God. That's what matters. So, when the Bible says, do not give what is holy to God, it means that God is practically saying, you can't go and marry an unbeliever. Are you hearing me? You can't just marry an unbeliever. Oh yes. You can't do it. If you are a Christian, if you are born of God, you can't join yourself in an unholy wedlock. No matter how good that man is, no matter how caring he is, you can't do it. You can't do it. God does not want you to do it. And there are so many scriptures. The next thing you need to know is that, how much will it cost me when you want to get married, when the idea of getting married comes to you? The next thing is, how much will it cost me? We are not talking about money here, please. This cost we are talking about has nothing to do with money. Amen? Every relationship will cost you something. Every relationship will add or take something away from you. So if you are going to get married, what will it cost you? What will it take from you? What will it demand from you? We are not even in the area of money. You see, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you are going to sign a contract that is very important, you will be warned to read it and understand it, true or false. Any contract that is very important in your life and that carries a lot of consequences, they may even ask you to get your lawyer before you sign, true or false. Now, marriage is one-way contract. One, marriage is a lifetime contract. So before you enter into it, you need to read the details. You need to understand the requirement. You need to understand the expectation. You need to understand the demands of that institution. God calls it a holy institution. A holy institution. Understand, marriage is not you and your husband alone. No, sir, no, man. It's not that. And that is the worst view you can have when before getting into marriage. The Bible said in Malachi chapter 2 that God is a covenant witness in any Christian marriage. So it's not you and your husband. No, it's not you and your husband. It's not you and your husband. We are not even talking in the area of I love him, I don't love him. That is not, that is not even far from it. What we are talking about 
getting the foundation right. Getting the foundation right. And unfortunately, the church is not teaching this. The church is not teaching this. And so people jump into it and then jump out, into, out of it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Marriage is more than you and the person you want to marry. You need to get it right from the beginning. God have an interest in marriage. God have an expectation in marriage. Are you hearing me? So you can't just think that you can marry whatever you want and bring the person to the pulpit and then get blessings and live your life the way. It doesn't work like that. No, Sanuma. Jesus said if you want to build a tower, you need to count the cost before you start so that you will know if you can finish it. Marriage is not for one year or two years or three years or seven years or ten years or fifteen years contract. Marriage is lifetime contract. So you need to read the details well. Praise the Lord. You need to understand the, the requirement. God has a requirement in any holy matrimony. God has an expectation in any holy matrimony. We don't understand what marriage does and what marriage is. It is one of those institutions that God has given to man to replicate himself in man. Did you hear what I just said? It is an institution that God has set up that gives man the opportunity to reproduce God in man. Why? Because God gives us the ability to procreate. God gives us the opportunity to bring people into this world. God gives us the opportunity to bring forth sons and daughters. In Malachi chapter 2, he calls them godly seed. That is his expectation in any marriage. God expects godly seed out of any marriage. Godly seed is his expectation. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? When you enter into unholy marriage, you pollute that godly seed. I will show you from the scriptures. Are you hearing me? Maybe, maybe I need to show you that so that we can, we can be on the same page. Hallelujah. Ezra chapter 9, verse 2. Ezra chapter 9, verse 2. What about those that don't know Mr. Ezra? Well, you can look to Nehemiah and then reverse back. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said to you, God has an, an interest, an investment in any holy matrimony. Verse 2. We will go back to this later on in the course because this is foundation I'm laying. So in the next two, three Sundays, as we deal with this topic, a lot of this will sink into you. Praise the Lord. You are still looking for Ezra. Okay, just, just listen now. Listen. If you read your Bible often, you will know Ezra, you will know Nehemiah, you will know Esther, you will know all these people. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that, hello, so that, ah, so that the Holy Seed is mixed. So that the Holy Seed is mixed with the people of those lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and rulers has been foremost in this trespass. I want to read it again. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed is mixed with the peoples of those lands. They were idol worshippers. They were unbelievers. They were people that God said, I will uproot and plant Israel. And then the people of Israel went on to take their sons and their daughters in marriage. And then Israel began to have a lot of trouble. Israel began to have a lot of setback as a nation. Israel was enslaved by that marriage. And then Ezra was a scribe. Ezra was beginning to look, where is this problem coming from? Why is this challenge coming on us? What have we done wrong? Somebody came to Ezra and said, hey, I can tell you what we have done. He said, even the leaders, they have gone to marry foreign sons and daughters. They have polluted. The holy seed has been mixed up. It's no longer pure seed. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? 
God's expectation has been polluted and corrupted. Many of you don't think about this. It's not every union that glorifies God. There are unions that will ensnare you for life. There are unions that you enter into. Suddenly you will lose your destiny. Not that you will die, but you will miss out the best of God in your life. And they told Ezra, these people have corrupted the godly, godly seed. They have corrupted the expectation of God. There is no more purity in Israel. We are no longer holy anymore. The holy seed has been diluted. And that is the plan of the enemy towards anybody with a ministry or a call of God upon your life. God calls you. Satan wants to scatter that call. And one of the ways the devil does it is by putting you in a marriage. Oh yes. You may not lose that ministry completely, but it will be diluted. It will become watery. We don't know the enemy. Anybody with a call upon his life, the devil will fight that call. If possible, the devil wants to destroy that call. Yes. And there is no other place that war is greatly fought than in the area of a partner. Because at the end of the day, your partner will determine what you do in church or not. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. Especially women. You don't understand that. The moment you get married, because you are not well informed, you can become a liability in the church. The more you get married, from being an asset, you can be a liability. Why? Because you are subject to what your husband says. He can say to you, don't go to church, and you have to obey him. Because you enter there, you, 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 know, you know, people bring up these questions after marriage. My husband say, I shouldn't come to church, uh, but I want to serve God. Should I obey him or not? In the first place, that question need not arise in your life. Are you hearing me? The, 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 the question is, uh, is coming up in your life is, is, is an example of your foolishness. It shouldn't have come up. And then what do you want us to say? What do you want the church to say? Why will you be in the position that you marry the man that will not allow you to go to church to serve God? So, in your own case, marriage costs you your love for God. Marriage costs you your ministry for God. And now you are asking the church, what do we do? What should you do? You should obey him. You should obey him. Because you enter there with your eyes open. You enter there with the word of God at work in you. You enter there knowing what God expects you to do. Praise the Lord. But so you should obey him. He is your Lord. Praise the Lord. Before you marry any man, before you marry any man or accept any man, find out for yourself that Christ is the head of that man. The Bible said Christ is the head of every man. Praise the Lord. Come on, come on. Say, I'm here. Yeah. Say, I'm here. Yeah. I think you really need to get these things right. First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. I want you to read that together if you find it. You should find it. Come on. First Corinthians 11, verse 3. You are still looking for it. You are still looking for it. Continue. Uh, go, hold on, hold on, hold on. But I want you to know that the head of every man is that in your Bible? The head of every man is what? Is Christ. The head of every man is what? Christ. And Paul was not writing to unbelievers. This letter is to a church. This letter is to us. Amen. Those that are born of God. 
Those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and their Savior. Those that have given their life to Jesus. Paul says, I want you to know that the head of every man is what? Is Christ. And so, we also know there are many mixed multitudes in church. Are you hearing me? There are many what? Mixed multitude in church. There are people that are in church that are not Christians. We know them. We know them. You may not know them because you see them wear suits and they pray and they lift up their hand and they worship. That does not make you a Christian. Paul said, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is what? Man. So, if I am under Christ, and I am under Christ, praise the Lord, and then I marry a woman that is a believer, then she is under me as I am under Christ. Paul so follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Do we see how the scriptures work? I will say it again. As Christ is my head, when I now marry, I become the head over my wife. And so the authority flows from Christ to me, from me to my wife. Do you get it? Not the other way around. The problem we have now is that there are many men that Christ is not their head, though they are in church. And then you go and marry them. And then they demand that you submit to them, but they are not submitted to Christ. That's where the problem is. They demand submission from you, but they are not submitted to Christ. And so the word of God is not in them. The reason why they demand your submission is to enslave you. It has nothing to do with the spirit of God because they don't know. They don't know. So, if you ever submit to somebody that Christ is not his head, you are in enslavement. If you ever submit to somebody that Christ is not his head, you have become a slave to that person. That is not the order of God's marriage. Amen. Are you hearing me? And the reason why there's so many trouble in marriages in the church is because many head of men is not under Christ. Many head, many heads of men, they are not under Christ. And so they come pretending to be Christ-like. They marry pretending to believe. They marry pretending to be one of Christ's family. And then a year or two or three or four after marriage, after marriage, then the manifestation begins. Then the trouble begins. Praise the Lord. I want you to see the patterns that I'm establishing for you. If you follow this pattern, you will not miss it in marriage. The person you want to marry, does he understand that marriage is a holy institution? One of, one of my daughter got married some years ago, and I called the husband and I said to him, do you understand anything about Christian marriage? He looked at me. He said, no, sir. No, sir, was his answer. And I just know that there will be trouble. I just know there will be trouble. I asked him, do you know anything about Christian marriage? He said, no. He doesn't. He doesn't. How can you manage what you don't understand? No, how? And many of you here, or even online watching, you have no idea about Christian marriage. So far, so far, love has not come in. Do you understand? Hello? So far, love has not come in. Who is in here right now at this level? Who is in here now? It is God. It is God. But many of you, 
You go in this toxic, toxic waste called love, and you cut God out from the beginning. I love him. I love her. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. You have no idea what love is. You have no idea. No, you have no idea what love is. You have no idea. From the beginning to where we are now, it is all about God if you want to have a good marriage. He is, listen, listen, listen. Let's look at the beginning again in Genesis chapter 2. When God said, it is not good for the man to be alone, that was what God said. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did you observe that Adam never complained to God that he needed a partner? Hello, daughter. Did you even observe from that scripture that Adam never complained to God that he needs a partner? In Genesis chapter 2. You've not seen it like that. Check it again with this understanding. It was God that said it's not good for the man to be alone. Not Adam. Are you hearing me? It was God that said it's not good for the man to be what? Alone. And then, after that, God said, you know what? Let's give him a partner. Let's make a helpmate for him. Amen? Let's do what? A helpmate for Adam. What does that tell us? What does that tell us? Your age is not what determines when you should get married. Your qualification, the money you have, shouldn't be what will determine when you should get married. So what should determine when you should get married? When you are led by the Holy Ghost that it is time. Shout hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost said to you, it's time to get married. That's when you should get married. It wasn't Adam that said, I need a wife. It wasn't Adam. It wasn't Adam that complained to God about having a wife. The Bible said that God said. God said. And if you want to have a beautiful marriage, let God say it's time. Let God say it's time. Not your parents, not your finances. And what was the reason? He says, he says, Adam needs a helpmate. Amen? Amen? Adam needs a helpmate. So you see that it wasn't about what Adam wanted. It was what God saw as a need in the life of Adam. God saw that something was amiss in the life of Adam. Yes? From that scripture. When you go home and read it again, you'll be amazed. Thank you. Sit down. Read that scripture again. Read that scripture again. Adam didn't find a wife. God found one for him at the right time of God. Imagine, imagine if Adam had gotten Eve before he named all the animals. God said, named all the animals, God said, I need a wife. And then God gives him a wife. And Adam said, this should be lion. The wife said, no, now call it cat. Amen? Amen? And Adam said, this should be a leopard. The wife said, ah, ah, find a sweet name. Call it kangaroo. Adam would say, what is this trouble, Lord? I have confusion here. Adam would say, let's call this monkey. The wife would say, no, now call it parrot. And then Adam would say, Lord, this work is confusing me. It's in confused, confused. It's, it, God said, okay, if you name the animal, let, let me have peace. And Adam will walk away. Can two walk together? Do we have evidence of it? Yes. God said, don't eat the fruit. Adam didn't eat it until Eve showed up. Hello? If it was just life with Adam, he wouldn't have eaten the fruit. The fruit was there, he didn't eat it. But you know women, they can see fruit that is healthy. They can see what it can nourish your body, that can give you necessary vitamins. Try it and you will see. Hello? Try it! Being led astray. Amen. When, uh, when you get married, 
The woman disorganizes your life completely before you begin to reorganize it. Hello? Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. I'm, tell I'm, tell I'm telling you the truth. When she entered, she said, I will fix your house. She doesn't know the reason why the house is the way it is because your pocket is a little bit. <laughs> your pocket is a little bit on strike. Praise the Lord. Do you understand that so far, love has not even come into the equation? We are talking about getting it right with God first. And yet, this is what we miss out when we want to get married. As many as are led by the Spirit, when it comes for a lifetime partner, there should be the leading of God. Are you hearing me? You pray about it, God said this is the right time. No, that's the way it should be. Did you observe that Adam was never looking for a wife? God understood the need of Adam. In Matthew 6, 33, what did Jesus say to us? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be other. He said, for God knows, God knows that you have need, you have need for these things. Amen? God knows our need before he shows up. And the area of marriage is one place where God knows it better than we. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There was something Paul said to the Corinthians that is still an amazement to me even today. Since I discovered that scripture, it hits me like, it hits me like a bombshell. Paul says in the time of distress or in the time of crisis, you should not get married. Have you ever read about that? Uh-huh. Paul says. And that was why when Adam was busy doing the work of the Lord, he didn't think about Eve. Because he was working something out. Paul wrote to the... Oh, oh, oh. The way you are looking at me, you are looking at me as if I'm saying something that does not exist. You want to see that? You sure? I will show you. I will show you because you asked for it. Praise the Lord. I would have just kept quiet too. Now you say you want to see it. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 7. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 25. When you get there, shout hallelujah. So we are all there. Listen, just follow me. I am reading from the New Living Translation. So if you have it, read with me. If you don't have it, listen to me. Don't read from your Bible now. But you have where it is written. Praise the Lord. Verse 25. Now, regarding your question about the young women who are not yet married, I do not have a command from the Lord for them. I do not have a command for them from the Lord. Paul says, is that in your Bible? But the Lord in his mercy has given me wisdom that can be trusted and I will share it with you. Say praise the Lord. I want you to understand the word wisdom that can be trusted. Of course, it's not the same in your, in your, in your Bible. Amen. But it's almost the same anyway. Praise the Lord. He says, the Lord has given me the wisdom that can be trusted. He said, I have no commandment from the Lord, yet I give judgment as one whom the Lord in his mercy has made trustworthy. And that is why we say, talk to your pastor. He has the wisdom of God at work in him concerning these matters. Your pastor will be able to counsel you from the word of God. Paul said, I have the wisdom you can be trust. You can trust. You, I have wisdom that you can, you can pull out from. He said, but the Lord in his mercy has given me wisdom that can be trusted. And I will share it with you. Verse 26. Verse 26. Praise the Lord. He said, because of the present crisis. He said, because of the present crisis. I think it is best to remain as you are. 
in New King James. He said, I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the present distress. It's the same thing. Distress and crisis is the same thing. That it is good for a man to remain as he is. Is that in your Bible? When you are looking for a job, it's not the time to get married. Are you hearing me, somebody? When you are looking for a job, it's not the time to get married. Get the job first. Settle down in the job. Then go find a wife. We are not done yet. Because of the present crisis, I think it is best to remain as you are. Verse 27. If you have a wife, do not seek to send to end the marriage. He says, remain as you are in time of challenge. During the time of Corona, don't get married. Let me put it in the current time, right? Praise the Lord. During the pandemic, don't get married. If you have a wife, do not seek to end the marriage. Don't divorce during this season. If you do not have a wife, do not seek to get married. Is that in your Bible? Say, Paul. Say, Paul. You have dealt with me today. Say, Paul, you have finished me today. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 28. But if you do get married during this time, Paul said it is not a sin. Is that in the Bible? And if a young woman gets married, it is not a sin. Do you understand? However, underline the word however, those who get married at this time will have troubles. Pakatoleboronsa tagaya. Those that get married in the time of distress, in the time of crisis, Paul says they will have troubles. He didn't say trouble, troubles. And I am trying to spare you those problems. I am trying to spare you those problems. I am trying to spare you those problems. You are trying to go to school. It's not the time to get married. No, seriously speaking. When you are situation, when you are circumstances, it's not to the level it should be. Don't get married. Why? It will require all that you have to come out of the trouble. So a partner will complicate the matter. Do you understand? No, do you get it? For instance, something happens. A man and woman, they encountered each other and, and the woman got pregnant. And then the parents said, you know what? Let them marry. Let them marry. Since she's pregnant, let them marry. Let them marry. And they called them together and said, you push, you marry. We will sponsor. We will do that. We will do that. Listen, that's a deception. It's not for the, it's, listen, it's not for the parents to decide. Actually, that decision should be made by the pastor with those two people. From the word of God, what they have done is terrible. But to force them into marriage is a disaster. Are you hearing me? Paul says, when you do get married, you will have troubles. You will have troubles. Praise the Lord. The argument is always, oh, the daughter, our daughter is pregnant and can't continue her education and can't continue. The, she should have thought about that before the engagement into that relationship. Are you hearing me? She should have thought about all those things. And they say, well, he can, the man can't just go and marry somebody else. Hello? Hello? Was it the man's fault that she got pregnant? No, was it the man's fault? 
Some stupid argument does not stand up in the court of men, the darkness of the court of God. If you were lawless enough to get pregnant while you were in school, then you should be lawless enough to carry the child and train the child and then believe God for, for a husband after school. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You may not like me, but I love you. Praise the Lord. The church is so ignorant about the truth of God's word. We keep making the same mistake over and over again. Are you hearing me? It is better, it is better for that girl to go before God and repent and ask God for mercy and say, Lord, I am set again for what is your will. But help me that this child will grow up in the fear of the Lord. Because you may push her into that marriage and you may destroy her life forever. But she can go before God and God will restore her life again. Do you understand? The court of men is not the court of God. Amen? After all, who is Solomon? The Solomon that God loved and made king over Israel. Who is Solomon? Was the one given birth by Beersheba. Who is Beersheba? The story you know. No, the story you know. Are you hearing me? Don't complicate a problem. Paul says, in the present crisis, in the present distress, stay the way you are. Because you need to fight through the problem with all that is in you. Many of you don't know that women are a distraction. No, I'm saying that. Are you hearing me? When you are alone, you can sleep on the floor. True or false? The money for mattress, you will use it and invest in pure water business. Amen? And your wife will say, honey, I need mattress. My body is paining me. My waist is paining me. My back is paining me. My head is paining me. And you only have $200 in your pocket. You want to start a business with that $200. And she said to you, if you love me, you will buy me a mattress. See my back, I have suffered. With you, me, I don't want to suffer. But as you are, as you are, you can endure all things. Because of the joy that is set before you. Praise the Lord. And the mother says, I'm coming to visit. You say, hey, honey, my mother is coming. We don't have fun. This place needs to be painted. We don't have carpet. We don't have fridge. Honey, we need to buy all this. I don't want my mother to laugh at me. Come. Come. Are you normal? Are you normal? Listen, you know, in all this, we've not even come to talk about love because love has not showed up in this matter. Are you following me? Because in this situation we're talking about, bring up love, say, get away with the love. We are talking about God in it. In this present crisis, Paul said it is better you don't get married. It is better you stay the way you are. Your time of education is crisis. Don't get distracted. The time of your education is a crisis. You must overcome it. You must subdue it. You don't get it. You don't get it. You don't get it. When you are starting a business, when you are developing a business, it's not the time to get married. You know why? You can walk through the night and walk through the day because you know what you want to achieve. You know what you want to achieve. And you wouldn't complain. You get a wife, you say, honey, you don't even know that you have a, a wife anymore. It's just you and this business, this stupid computer. And this computer is your life. You are writing program on it. You are doing marketing on it. And she looks at you and says, it's you and this stupid computer all the time. You don't have time for me. And you say, stupid computer. This is my, this is my livelihood. This is our livelihood. I get bread from it. He said, I don't want to hear. I don't want to see. And he went out. And she was sweeping the house. Because she has no respect for the computer, she was just pulling the cable here and her. 
stupid cable, stupid computer, stupid connection. And she pulled out everything together and, and just dump it for you somewhere. Meanwhile, you left and programmed the computer to be doing something, something, you come back. And then you come back and say, Hey! Hey! My computer! Agnes! Agnes! Oh, Agnes! Agnes, what did you do? He says, what did I do? Ask, don't you see how they, they clean, how clean the house is? Wait, you messed everywhere up and I decided to clean it. It's not you to thank me. Thank you. Agnes, thank you. Agnes, you have finished me. You have destroyed my programming and my computer. He says, start again now. Do not give what is holy. Do not give what is holy to do not give what is holy to you are reaping the benefit you got up in the morning fellowshipping with the Lord and the anointing was so strong and he was sleeping and you worship and worship you were just about to change level in the realm of Israel she just, he just goes and says Agnes he never do ah are you the only Christian in this compound? You are disturbing me from sleeping. You were cut out of grace. You were disconnected from grace automatically. Why can two walk together? Except they agree. Count the cost before you enter. Some marriage will rob you of your ministry. Some marriage will rob you of your place in God. Some marriage will rob you of God's expectation. The Bible said the holy seed has been corrupted. Instead of you, look at me, every one of you. Instead of you as a Christian to give birth to a child that will go to hell, it's better to stay single for life. Are you hearing me? Instead of you, a new creation, you give birth to a child and that child made it to hell. It is better to stay single. Don't make disciples for the devil. You don't get it. You don't get it. Marriage is not just marriage. It is an institution of God. And God say it is holy. Are you hearing me? It is holy. Anybody that Christ is not his head cannot do well in marriage. It's like love. Love is not a, a human thing. Love is not a man thing. Love is not a natural thing. There is no natural love. Are you hearing me? Many of you speak what you don't understand. We just love each other naturally. It's a lie. There is no natural love. There is no natural love. I pray you will get it today. Shout hallelujah. I pray you will get it. There is nothing called natural love. There is nothing called natural love. There is nothing like that. What you call natural love is stupidity coated with eyes. Foolishness coated with, what do they use to make cake? Uh, icing, right? That's what you call love. It's stupidity packaged with icing. As you are eating it, they switch you, they think they will run your stomach after. I, I, I love him, I love him, I, 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 I love him. You know, you know, you know. We are just, we have the right chemistry. No, it's physics you have. Physics you have. You speak some junk language. You have the right chemistry. What is chemistry? Did you do chemistry in school? You failed even Igbo language. You are Igbo person. You failed Igbo. You are Yoruba. You failed Yoruba. You are Hausa. You failed Hausa. And now you say your chemistry is the same. Where did you get that knowledge? Can you see chemistry? Can you recognize a chemical if you see one? You say we have, we have the, our chemistry is the same. You can't believe we just met for one week. It's like we've been known each other for seven years. You are a fool. You've been hypnotized. 
Whatever he gave you is working. You need deliverance. Run to church, run to pastor. Begin to pray. Praise the Lord. No, do you understand what I'm talking about? You meet somebody within seven days. One month, you are in love. You are a fool. You may not like me, but I love you. And I don't want you to suffer. I don't want you to suffer. Are you hearing me? You want to get married. Does a man have a job? No. Does a woman have a job? No. How are you going to live? We are believing God. That's stupidity. That's stupidity. Listen. Listen. You don't enter marriage by faith. Listen to me. You don't enter marriage by faith. You enter marriage by knowledge and you are sustaining it by faith. Hear me well. You enter marriage with knowledge or by knowledge and when you are in it, faith is alive. Remember, faith comes by the word. Faith comes by the word. You don't enter into marriage by faith. A man does not have an income. The woman does not have an income. Don't get married. You shouldn't get married. Are you hearing me? You shouldn't get married. And so there is no way students should be in a relationship. Praise the Lord. No, you may not like it, I'm telling you the truth. Both of them are somebody's liability. And so I'm paying for you to go and enjoy love. You are a fool if I catch you. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm paying for you to go and have fun in school if I catch you. It will be the last class you will attend. When you go to school, start up a prayer, a prayer meeting. Start up a seminar. Start up something in church for God. Start something up. Let, you be, let them call you pastor. Start something for God. The moment you land on the campus, let it be know who you are. Gather those that will pray with you. Gather those that will fast with you. Gather those that will preach the gospel with you. Gather those you can set up viewing center. What are you talking about? You got to school now. You have two boyfriends. He said, Daddy, actually, we are just friends. There is nothing that is in between. If there is nothing in between, why, why are you friends? Have, have you ever heard about friends with nothing in between? Is that no foolishness? We are just friends. Actually, there is nothing in between us. We are just friends. So how do you get friends if there's nothing in between? How do you become friends? Even though you were in school, you have, you, are, you, you have become more stupid. You were smarter at home than in school. You are telling me you are just friends, nothing is in between. So how do you become friends if there's nothing in between? You are worshiping him, laughing because my eyes are all of you. Praise the Lord. The young man can pay his school fees. So now, you write your list and pad it so that your father will pay your school fees and pay the one of the boy. Your father is carrying you, you are carrying a boy. And you say it's love. Listen, so far we are just dealing about foundation. Love has not even come in. Because there is no love in the matter. What is in the matter is God. And God being happy. And if God is not in it, you will suffer, full stop. Have you seen the rate of divorce in the church? No, the rate of divorce in the church. The rate of divorce in the church, even with pastors. This is not a joke. It's not God's plan. It's not God's will. You don't just marry somebody because he comes to church. Are you hearing me? When you want to get married, when you think it's right for you to marry, it is time to talk with your pastor first. It will help you. He will guide you. Many of you say, hmm, hmm, nobody will control me. I will find my own husband. I will find my own wife. Go and find. Go and find. Go and find. The only thing you cannot bring the scripture to support it. Adam did not find the wife. 
Adam was given a wife by the father. True or not? Isaac did not find a wife. True or false? He was given a wife. True or false? Follow the Bible. Jacob did not find a wife. True or false? Moses did not find a wife. True or false? Where do you get your lawlessness from? No, where do you get your lawlessness from? Can you imagine, Pastor wants to give me a wife. You should even be thanking God. With all your character, somebody, Pastor wants to give you somebody. You don't know how much Pastor has pleaded with a young man to marry you. Are you hearing me? You don't know the guarantee Pastor has given the young man. Please, I'll be praying for you. I will never stop praying. Just marry her. Please, I'm begging you, marry her. The man said, Pastor, why me? Now? I said, there's nobody else. Please, take Please, I will make sure the bar price is, is cheap. Please. 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 If you want me to live longer as a pastor, marry her. Because what she's doing to me, the only way you can save me is by marrying her. Hello? And then you say, you are told, you say, Daddy, I don't like him. He's got pimple. He's so short. He, he doesn't use perfume. He, uh. Did you hear yourself? Did you hear yourself? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Treasure. Is this not a serious matter? It is, sir. It's a, it's a serious matter. It's a, very, serious. very serious matter. Very serious. Very serious. Very serious. Praise the Lord. After beginning, the young man, the young man said, okay, pastor, because of you. Pastor, because of you, I will agree. And I said, call, 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 um, call Agnes. Agnes, today is the day of miracle. He said, daddy, what happened? He said, God has done it for you. He said, daddy, what happened? Said, Say, praise the Lord. He said, daddy, what happened? You see, the stubbornness is already beginning. He said, oh, he said, Okun has finally agreed to marry you. Thank you, sit down. She said, what? Daddy, I don't like this, you know. I don't like... That is the reason why daddy wants you to go. That is why the daddy wants you to go. Daddy, how can you do such a thing? How dare you? This is my life, daddy. It's getting too much for you. I'm going to tell mommy. Go and tell mommy. If mommy finds somebody better, I will agree. Praise the Lord. Which Bible do you read? Which Bible do you read that the man went to get a wife by himself? Hello? No, which Bible do you read? Tell me. You pray in the name of God of Abraham. God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Hello, right? And the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You pray in that name, right? When it comes to live like them, you rebel and, and, and disobey. But you pray in that name, but you don't want to follow that name. And that's why there's so much lawlessness in the church. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. Nor cast your pearl before the swine. This is the first set of teaching I'm doing concerning marriage here in Lagos. And I want you to get it so well that nobody will miss it in this church in Jesus' name. Because what said, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. You are too lawless to know who is faithful in church. Just because you see somebody in church does not mean that the person is faithful. When you say to pastor, pastor, this person is interested in me. Pastor will say, God forbid. Who? Who? He said, Doctor, how manage now? Actually, he's very nice. He said, Stop that nice. Stop that nice. A young man that wanted to come and marry my daughter in Munich came to see me in my office and I looked at him. He said, Actually, Pastor, I am interested in so so so. I said, You? <laughs> I said, You? I said, I've not even located you in the realm of the spirit. That was what I told him. He said, Pastor, you keep saying you have not located me in the realm of the spirit. What does it even mean? What does it mean? 
That question is sufficient enough to disqualify him. You have no place in the realm of the spirit. And I said to him, I have not located you in the realm of the spirit. You are, I said to him, I said, you know, you know what you are. You are a wanderer. People that are not planted in church are wanderers. And if they marry you, they will make you a wanderer too. Because every lawless person is a wanderer. The moment you are connected from, disconnected from God, you become a wanderer. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You must follow the word of God if you want to enjoy life. Even in marriage. You don't marry anybody by accident. I just saw him in the shopping mall and we bonded. We bonded. No, we will use glue and debond you people. We bonded in the shopping mall. We went out for coffee. We went out for dinner. We went out, we went out, and that is the reason why. As much as that lies within the power of the pastor, which means what pastor knows, pastor should not allow that social outing because it's terrible. And paper when you want to get married. Sit down with a guy. Tell him to bring his own pen and paper. Okay? How much will the ma marriage cost? Eh? How much will we get the marriage cost? Cost you spiritually, cost me spiritually. Then how much will it cost financially? Eh? How many children do you want to have? Eh? Sit down. And paper. I told you, you don't marry by faith. You marry with knowledge and then run marriage by faith. There are two different things. Through knowledge, the judge shall be delivered. What is your plan for the next 15 years, please? What is your plan? The man said, Well, I'm planning. Yeah, but what is your plan? I am, yeah, what is your plan? Tell your husband, I don't intend to walk through all my life. From the beginning, I can walk for three, four, five years. If I choose to walk, let it be a choice. But my husband, according to the word of God, will provide for me. The problem with those in Europe, they say in Europe it's not the same. Because in Europe, the couples have to walk because life is very expensive. Then don't marry! Are you hearing me? If it's too expensive to live in Europe, don't marry. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Don't marry if it's too expensive. But if you want to marry, negotiate from the beginning. Negotiate the cost of keeping the home. Negotiate the cost of running the house. Negotiate the cost of raising the children. Negotiate the cost of sending them to school. Negotiate from the start and write it down. Let two of you sign. It's wisdom. Agreed. Are you hearing me? When the husband says you go to work and he will go to work and two of you are working, two of you come back at the same time and when you come back, he will sit at the sofa and say, honey, when will the food be ready? That's foolishness. Are you hearing me? That's foolishness. If your wife helps you pay the bill in the house, you should help her do the work in the house. Hello? If she helps you to carry the responsibility and the bills, you should be in the kitchen with her also. When you put finish eating, she can go into the room and lie down and say, honey, please help me with the dishes. And remove the dustbin. Hello? You see the way you were looking at me. You are not serious. You are not serious. You are not serious. They're not serious. Praise the Lord. I am telling you from God's word. You don't say be under authority. It is the job of the woman to bring food. And it is the job of the woman. That is, that is heresy of the scripture. That's twisting the scripture to your own. You are twisting the scriptures. But we are not even there yet. I'm just bringing some things up. 
So now you know to even get married, you need to get it right with God first. You need to understand. When you see a man that says, like, like in Europe, a lot of them need paper. Before you get married, get paper first. Are you hearing me? Paul say, in the present distress, let everyone be the way they are. He said, if you marry in distress, you will have troubles. You will have troubles when you marry in distress. So when you are looking for paper, you don't marry to get paper. And then after you get the paper, you realize that you, actually I don't like her. I, it's because I was desperate, I needed paper. No, how would you have such things? I have had it a lot. Actually, I didn't love her. It's because she got pregnant, then I have to. I was forced to marry her. Is that what you want? In the present distress, let every man be the way he is. You don't need to marry. You don't need to marry. Carry your wahala alone. When you are through, you can now look for a wife. And then share your story about how you made it with her. Amen? You know? Not the one you said that if you love me, you will, won't you suffer with me? Has she not suffered enough? And so after I do that, she will continue to suffer. That's phase two. Already she has suffered from the family house. And now, marrying you again, she will continue up stage two of the suffering. No, are you hearing me? And the worst thing that happens, a family will marry their daughter to a rich man because they are poor. Is it her fault that you are poor? No, is it her fault? You say, you know, you know, our family does not have money. We don't have a... Uh, 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 uh. So marry him now so that we can be eating. Eh? Eh? It is wickedness to do that. And it's witchcraft to do that. If you like, don't come to God's family church. We are online. When you type anything, God will still bring this message to you. You don't want to hear the truth. That's why your life is the way it is. Follow God and be made by God. You believe God for your paper. When you get it, then you look for a wife. You don't look for a wife because of you are looking for paper. So your wife is only a trend by butter. Then after you have gotten the paper, you realize that, ah, I told there's a woman in, a, in my village. We, have, we went to school together. I went to marry. Why didn't she give you the paper? You used some... And such wickedness is the reason why many people are suffering in Europe or in America. You use people to get your way. And when they cry to God against you, God resists you and you don't make progress. I will show you from the Bible next Sunday how a wife can be a snare to you. Your wife you married can be your roadblock to your destiny. It's in the Bible. Read the Bible, not assume the Bible. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Rise on your feet. Mm -hmm. Everybody is cold. You should be cold. You should be cold. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Lose that boyfriend, lose that girlfriend now. Both of you unemployed, you are, you are dating. What, what is the date there? You should have date with work. Are you hearing me? Those of you in the worship, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. If I ever catch any of you with boyfriend or girlfriend, you, I will deal with you. When you have gotten your job, you are making good money. We will know when you pay tight. Praise the Lord. Not that you are living by grace and you want to carry another woman to, to also live by grace with you. And then within the first day she got pregnant and three of you are living by grace. And then within, we are, after one year now you people come to church. Pastor, we need help. Pastor, you know we didn't plan it like this. What do you, stay single then. Stay A tall man without job does not bring money into the house. Nobody pays somebody because he's tall. Are you hearing me? Yes. That he is looking good does not bring money. 
and you say, I want to marry him before somebody else will marry him. Let somebody else marry him and carry the wahala. Are you hearing me? I want to marry him quickly. I don't want to. Huh, huh. If I miss this opportunity, that you will give me a husband. Go and marry. If he comes to that, go and marry. Remember, if you marry the wrong person, the godly seed will be corrupted. And there will be no cure. There will be no cure. Have it in mind, when you want to get married, that God wants godly seed out of you. Out of your union. And if anybody is not under Christ, they cannot produce godly seed. Because godly seed comes from God. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Lift up your hand. Pray this prayer, Lord. I don't want to miss it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, open my eyes. Open my understanding. That I will do what is right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me not to be deceived. By the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Lord, take away. Every desperation. In my life. Concerning this matter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I want to please you. In all things. In every area of my life. I want to please you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' precious name we have declared. Praise the Lord. Now, those of you that are already married, watching or here, watching this program, remember, you are already in. Just hold on. We'll get to your part. Amen? Just hold on. We'll get to your... But if you also know from the word that you are hearing that you enter through corner, corner way. Amen? One thing you should do is that just repent. And as you are repenting, talk to a pastor. It will help you. We can help you to straighten things out. Paul says, I have wisdom that can be trusted. And I believe that God has given me such wisdom from his word that can be trusted. Praise the Lord. So whatever your situation is, you can still make a change. It's never too late to do what is right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bring out our tithe and our offering. Sister Treasure, come and take the tithe and the offering. God is a good God. Praise the Lord. Come and take the title. No, give her a microphone, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before that, let's quickly stretch our hands towards our daddy. Let's just bless him because he has blessed us with the word this morning. Let's pray that the Lord will enrich him. The Lord will.